Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Caption Life Show. In this episode, we are reviewing the event series from DC Comics Flashpoint. And joining us to help us review is Chad Burdett, content manager for Comic Watch. The spotlight for this episode is the podcast None of My Friends Like Comics, where longtime comic enthusiast Nick has a first time comic reader on the show, and they talk about a particular issue and they decide if they want to pull it or drop it. Let's get started. Hey, and welcome to The Caption Life, a show for the most casual and dedicated fans of comics and a member of the Comic Watch family. I'm your host, Sean. Join me and discover what the world of comics and graphic novels have to offer. From one-on-one interviews with industry professionals, roundtable discussions with passionate fans, and reviews on the latest comics, TV shows, and movies. Now let's dive right on in. So as I mentioned in the cold opening, we're doing a comics review and commentary on the five-issue series Flashpoint by DC Comics. It was released in 2011. It was written by Jeff Johns, uh, penciled by Andy Kubert, inked by Sandra Hope, colored by Alex Sinclair, and lettered by Nick J. uh, Napolitano. Sorry about that. If you're not familiar with the series, then here is the official synopsis from DC Comics. When Barry Allen wakes at his desk, he discovers the world has changed. Family is alive, loved ones are strangers, and close friends are different, gone, or worse. It's a world on the brink of a cataclysmic war, but where are Earth's greatest heroes to stop it? It's a place where America's last hope is Cyborg, who hopes to gather the forces of the Outsider, the Secret Seven, Shazam, Citizen Cold, and other new and familiar yet altered faces. It's a world that could be running out of time if the Flash can't find the villain who altered the timeline. As you may know, I select comics that we're about to review by taking recommendations from our guest hosts. Uh, today's episode, it's actually a little bit different. I suggested this one because of the Flash movie that came out. I thought it'd be timely for us to talk about the series that the movie's based on. But please welcome to the show our guest host today, Chad Burdett. Chad is a lifelong comic book fan and reader and have been introduced at a young age via Super Friends Comics and other DC Comics under the Whitman banner. In 2008, Chad began writing for the Albany New York Times Union, contributing and overseeing the comic book community blog hosted by the newspaper, which lasted until 2021. In 2019, Chad came on as a news contributor for Comic Watch. During this time, he also freelanced for Screen Rant and com- uh, CBR now <laughs> uh, writing lists. In 2021, Chad was promoted to editor uh, to editor for Comic Watch and later to content manager in round 2022. In 2020, Chad started to focus on his YouTube channel, which before then was mainly interviews at local cons and bigger ones such as New York Comic Con and Baltimore Comic Con. The Comic Multiverse is an interview format where he talks to creators doing anything from Kickstarters to mainstream creators he has met on the convention scene. He also somehow weaseled his way into the co-host chair of the Comic Watchers and does the weekly crowdfunder corner along with editing news and the occasional review for the site. Chad's also on the planning committee for one of the local comic conventions hosted by one of the local libraries in upstate New York. When not chained to his computer doing things for Comic Watch, Chad enjoys spending time with his wife and -and six-and-a-half-year-old son, drinking craft beer and sleeping. Chad, welcome to The Caption Life. How are you doing tonight? Well, I found a a spot in between all those to come and chat. (laughs) (laughs) I bet, yeah. Yeah. you know, it was interesting. I don't think I realized that you were uh, a writer for a long time. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Like how, like how you got that and and uh, that whole experience? Well, um, yeah. Um, I when I first moved up to the Albany area, um, I was introduced. I was introduced to some, you know, a comic book store owner, and he, you know, got a group of us together, kind of have a, our own little comic book group where we got together and geeked out and just kind of talked about comics and stuff like that. And so um, one of the guys um, who was part of that group was writing one of the community blogs uh, for the uh, Albany Times Union and I guess was talking to whoever was in charge there. And he said, oh, yeah, we want to do a comic books blog. And so the uh, one guy goes, oh, do you know anybody who would like to be good for that? I guess like, me <laughs> I, I'll, 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 I'll try <laughs> and right. so it's just kind of and then, then it kind of just kind of snowballed from there um so yeah and a- yeah I, I you know tried to do weekly well a couple times a week uh, at one point i was 
pretty much watching all the CW shows, doing like a transcription and then like doing the interconnections of, with the comic books. That was a lot of, that was very time consuming. Right. <laughs> I bet. No kidding. Well, thanks for coming on the show and uh, thank you for agreeing to review Flashpoint. And, you know, as I mentioned before, usually I ask people what comics they want to read, but I think this one, um, as we talked about before the uh, we started recording, I had actually put this out into the Slack channel for Comic Watch to see who wanted to come on the show to talk about Flashpoint because I know the Flash was coming out and this would be a good one to talk about to discuss the uh, series that um, the movie is based off of. So what I want to ask you is, you know, Flashpoint is obviously a comic series centered around the Flash. There's other characters in there as well, too. Um, you know, the Batman is a, a pivotal part of the story as well. But I want to ask you, what was your introduction, your origin story to the Flash? Or if you want to talk about your introduction to Flashpoint, the series, um, either one would be fine. Well, I mean, I, you know, I have always been a, a DC uh, comics, you know, meaning that way. And I've always been Batman, but uh, Flash kind of always, you know, caught my, especially the Wally West uh, series um, from the uh, early, well, post, post-crisis uh, timeline. And, and then when, you know, I was a big, you know, reading all the events and once, you know, he, when Barry came back finally in Final Crisis and then you know, Flashpoint spun out of kind of like Blackest Night, then it was, and then I was like, oh, you know, not that I'm ready for another event, but, you know, it's, I, I, I'm, I, I like the, I like the Elseworlds type, and this had a very Elseworlds type feel to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, with, you know, all the, you, you're seeing all the, when they were promoing all the different versions of the characters that, you know, you know and love, which aren't the characters you know and love. <laughs> but <laughs> as you can tell, I'm a, I'm a big Flash fan. I got my uh, geek jersey. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, that's a really cool jersey. I love that. Did, where'd you get that from? Because I feel like I've seen that before. I've, I've probably worn it before, but um, it's uh, from my, it was a gift from my older brother from Geek Jersey. Um, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember seeing geek jersey like they create a lot of different kinds of jersey like based on you know yeah. comic book or just you know cartoons or, or whatnot. And I think my favorite one was uh, the one they have for Shredder. I think was really cool. Is one I've been keeping the eye out on, and I think I saw <laughs> that on their website. So that's really cool. I like that. Yeah, I, I wish I could you know afford more of them, but <laughs> they're, <laughs> oh, they're, they're, they're really they're really nice. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet yeah. Um, are you a hockey fan in general as well, too? Or I, I dabble. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I dabble in sports, baseball, hockey, whatever. Right. I, I I really don't have time to sit down and watch stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm the same way. Well, and I asked about hockey because growing up, hockey was my sport. That was my favorite sport growing up. I mm. started when I was nine after watching the mighty ducks obviously and um <laughs> has been my favorite sport since then but like you like I, I don't have time to sit down and watch a lot of games and so i haven't really watched an nhl game in years and uh i remember this year people were talking about the stanley cup finals and i was like i didn't even realize that we we're already in the playoffs but it made sense because <laughs> of the time of year and i just didn't even think about it so yeah i i I know for me personally, uh, my introduction to The Flash was actually from the TV show in the 90s that starred John Wesley uh, Ships. And um, I, you know, I think that only lasted like a couple of seasons, but I really enjoyed that show. I thought it was really cool watching it when I was a kid. And I remember having the Game Boy game of The Flash. <laughs> and, and this is when the Game Boy was in like light green and dark green, right? And so, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I know what you're talking about because <laughs> yeah, um, but you know playing that I, I, game. I'm, I'm that old too, so. <laughs> <laughs> but you know playing that game. That's um, you know also watching the show as well too. But playing the game reminds me of you know the villains that Flash had like Captain Cold and Trickster, which you know in the show Trickster was played by Mark Hamill, uh, which I thought was really cool. Call uh, especially. In the CW show, they actually had Mark Hamill like reprise that role in a way yeah. as well too, which I thought was a really cool, um, a really cool idea that they had. But yeah, that was my introduction to the Flash. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into uh, Flashpoint. If you haven't read the series yet, um, I gotta be honest with you, it's been about 
12 years. And so a lot of this is probably not new. You've probably seen a version <laughs> of this in media and all that. Um, so hopefully you're not, uh, hopefully you're okay with spoilers, but if not, go ahead and hit pause and then come back to this a little bit later. Um, but let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, so a little bit of interest con- of some interesting context before we uh, start with the first issue of the series. So like I mentioned before, this story has played a pivotal role in a lot of different TV shows and movies. So, you know, The Flash, it just came out um, a couple weeks ago. It's really, a lot of it is based on this story. Um, the CW Flash show adapted this st- this story as well to their s- series. Um, there's an animated movie called Justice League Flashpoint Paradox, which is, you know, a little bit truer to this series. They made some uh, liberties and made some changes to the story uh, for the movie and all that. But about, I would say about 80% of it is straight from yeah. this comic book. So it, it's a pretty close adaptation to it. So this is obviously a popular storyline for a, um, for DC to adapt this to any kind of story that they're doing that includes a Flash or, you know, Obviously, something that if they want to do a reset, this is what they use, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, this event was actually what ended like the new earth for DC, which I can't remember, you know, what they called it or what, you know, multiverse or whatever they call it. But it was supposed to reset DC comics for the new 52, which ended up being a popular universe afterwards as well, too. So this was actually the event popular. to kind of like reset everything. <laughs> Say what? Popular. New 52. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, yeah, like, I, yeah, a lot of, I mean, a lot of people like New 52. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, there was some good, there was some bad. Right. Yeah. It kind of, I think it depends on the, on the characters and stuff like that. Like, like for me, I love, uh, you know, the Batman in New 52 because that's, you know, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo and all that. Like, you know, that was the New 52 that they, uh, the Batman that they've written and all that. But I know, you know, there's some other characters. I, I'll be honest, like DC Comics, I don't, really venture out uh, too much from Batman or Superman. I, I don't read some of the other ones. So I know like there's been other characters that people have not been a fan of with new 52 and all that, but, um, but it, it was a huge deal for them to reset it. Oh, yeah. um, and it was supposed to be like kind of just, you know, a fresh start for the DC comics world in that regard. Um, for this series also, even though it's a five issue series, there was a lot of tie-ins into this as well, too. I think it ended up being like about 60 tie-ins, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, there were a lot of... I wouldn't say a lot, but there were there were plenty of tie-ins. And yeah. I And you didn't have to read them, but they kind of fleshed things out and gave you more of the, a, a broader um, story. It, it, it fleshed the whole Aquaman, mm-hmm. Wonder Woman story out. It you got uh you know more background into the batman and you know mm-hmm. who the joker was and I, I i actually liked the uh the the tie-ins more so than the uh, <laughs> <laughs> than the <this> series <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's it's definitely just like what you said the tie-ins are kind of nice to give you more you know history and background and context to what was going on in the series but it definitely wasn't one of those where if you didn't read it, you were lost. Like you just, and I think because the way they set it up, I, um, in the first issue of the series made it easier to be able to do that sort of thing. And we'll talk about, you know, why that is in a minute here. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I think that they did a pretty good job of writing the five issue story so that if you didn't read the tie-ins, you weren't going to be lost. At least I, I didn't feel like I was lost cause I've only read the main five issue series and I felt like I was, you know, following along just fine. So, mm-hmm. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the first issue of the series um, of Flashpoint. And so issue one opens up with Barry Allen waking up and he sees that the whole you know world around him is different. It, it's, it's kind of thrown off because um, when he wakes up, he realizes that I think he, he realized like something was different. It, it wasn't really quite clear what he thought was different, but he realizes or could tell something was different. And yeah, because so, he was sleeping at work. <laughs> yeah, he was he was sleeping at work. Um, and so when he was uh, walking around the, uh, the office and everything, he ran into his mom, which you know uh, his origin story is that his mom was killed at a very young age, or when he was when he was a, at a young age. And so that really threw him off. Oh, and and the other thing was he, someone had said that um, 
Citizen Cold was yeah. the <laughs> was like the hero of Central City. So that was another thing that kind of made him think like, what's going on here? So um, which, you know, Citizens Cold is is really Captain Cold in, in um, his universe. But he ran into his mom. His mom is still alive. And he thought that was really weird, but he's really happy about it, obviously. Um, and so what we find out a little bit later is that he talks to his mom and says that, you know, something's wrong about this. Someone's m- messed with the timeline. He says, I'm the Flash. You know, I'm part of the Justice League. And his mom says, who are Ooh. those people? <laughs> yes, exactly. She's like, uh, what are you talking about? Yeah. And, a, and of course, the only person that he mentions that she does recognize is Batman, which you know, like, because he even mentioned Superman, and Superman was not a, a thing in this world. And so it's funny how Superman well, he, being... was, he, he was a thing in this world. He was just not known to the public. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. Right. And we'll and we'll get that in a second. But yeah, just when he mentioned that, though, like she says, she's never heard of him. Right. So it's just funny that Batman is like that concept of like, of course, you know, we heard of Batman, like he's in every universe. So what's really interesting is that we get to that next scene and Batman's flying, you know, along Gotham City. You see uh, Wayne Casinos like all over the background. Batman has kind of a different look to his suit. He has a little bit of red and he has like a red circle uh, behind the bat signal and he has red eyes instead of white eyes. So it's a little bit different already that we can see. And he's chasing a character named Yo-Yo, which is kind of, she looks like... Harley Quinn almost. Would you agree, Chad? Yeah, I would, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it seemed like that's how it's supposed to be. Um, and so he stops her at the top of a building and keeps asking, you know, where's the Joker? Because apparently the Joker kidnapped, um, excuse me, Joker kidnapped Harvey Dent's twins. And so he's trying yeah. to save her. Uh, I'm sorry, save them. And then Yo-Yo's like, I'm not going to tell you. And then he gets a little torturous. He takes out his bat ring and like starts, you know, scratching at her <laughs> sunglasses, which is a little terrifying. And then she's like, you know, if you're asking this, then they're probably already dead. And he said, so are you. And then just throws her off the edge of the building, <laughs> which, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They really ramped up the violence in the Flashpoint uh, universe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was like, you know, they weren't holding anything <clears throat> back. You know, this is obviously a different kind of Batman. And and to kind of go off the rails here a little bit, because we don't really see this in the five issues of Flashpoint. But, um, well, I'll hold off on this a little bit until we get to that point, And then I'll kind of go back to this scene here. Cause I think it'd be interesting to talk about this a little bit later, but, um, yeah. So Batman throws her off the edge of a building and then she's falling to her death. And then cyborg saves her at the last second. Now, Batman was like trying to kill her like flat out. He was, he had made no attempt to save her or anything like that. He didn't know cyborg was there. He just was going to kill her. So this is obviously a different kind of Batman than what we used to in the comics. Right. So, Cyborg saves her, and then he talks to Batman, and we find out that Cyborg is trying to get a team together, and um, you know they consist of like a, a number of different people, right? Like Enchantress was one of them, uh, says the Cole was one of them, Shazam, the, outsi- the yeah. outsider, the outsider, yeah. Um, I, I don't think, think Griff. This is, probably, this is probably the first time that they introduced the concept of the uh, five. Or the seven members that you know, the separate Shazam people. Yeah, yeah. So what's interesting in this is that in this scene here, we see um, all the kids together. And what's funny is in this universe, the way Shazam is spelled out is usually it's just you know Shazam with an exclamation point at the end. And this one, when they say Shazam, the uh, dialogue bubble shows an exclamation point after every letter, right? But it's kind of like the Captain Planet effect almost because like all of them had to say Sazam to like to create what they call Captain Thunder essentially. It's you know it's Sazam, but they call him Captain Captain Thunder. So it's like all of them had to like combine in order to become Captain Thunder. It's not like, you know, some of the other ones that we've seen where they have like their own Sazam power or whatnot. So mm-hmm. yeah, so so anyway, so we see all these heroes, you know, getting together and they're talking to Batman, asking him to join the team because they know that they, you know, kind of dive into how um, Aquaman and Atlanteans have been warring against Wonder Woman and the Amazonians. And pretty much at this point, they've killed like millions of people on Earth with their war. And they, yeah, they know sunk that. Half of Europe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, half of Europe was sunk, right? I think Paris was already, maybe all, all of France was already like underwater because of the Atlanteans. Um, you know, the, the United Kingdom them was being um was being ran by uh the amazonians and so 
it, it was just it kept spreading out in terms of you know what they were conquering, what they were damaging, and stuff like that. So they wanted to stop them before they pretty much destroyed the world. And Cyborg asked Batman to join, and Batman said, "No, he doesn't care. There's it's hopeless. Basically, this is a man without hope. He's like it's hopeless. Why even bother?" But because he said no, all the other heroes said, like, well, there's no reason to join this fight if Batman's not joining us, right? Um, so, and, and it's interesting to see that uh, because, you know, Batman's always been a strategist, but the way that people talk about him, he's been, like, a legend. Like, I guess people were still unsure if they've seen, like, if, if he was actually real or not. So that, yeah. this is kind of just a really interesting, you know, persona that they created with Batman and being very different, but being very same at the same time. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so Batman said no, you know, and they all kind of disbanded. And then, you know, the Flash realizes that he needs to go see uh, Batman to figure out like how to get his powers back because he can't run. He doesn't have his powers because of what happened. So he needs to go see Batman to try to get his powers back. And so he enters, um, you know, the the Wayne Manor and tries to find Bruce Wayne. It's all empty. He goes down the Batcave, and then that's when he sees like some differences of the Batcave than what he's used to. There is a glass case with a gun in it. Uh, he sees a picture of Bruce with his parents, and then Batman shows up and says, "Who are you? Why are you here?" <laughs> and then as he talks, he finds out that Batman is not Bruce Wayne. But it's actually Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's father. And in this universe, Bruce Wayne was the one that's killed and not his parents, right? And that's how issue one ends. <laughs> yeah. Now, Chad, I was talking about how this is actually an interesting story because of what he was talking about with the Joker. Do you want to talk about like what's interesting in this and, and why the Joker is, is really interesting in this story that we actually don't see in the five issues here? Yeah, it is, it's more in the uh, Batman mini series because Martha went, goes insane and becomes the Joker. <laughs> yes. So the <laughs> Joker is, is Bruce Wayne's mom in this instance. And so it's a really interesting dynamic to see that the two parents pretty much dealing with the death of their only son in very, you know, different ways, still very violent, both of them, but <laughs> in very different ways. And so it's interesting how his dad becomes the Batman and then his mom becomes the Joker. So, um, and then, yeah, like Yo-Yo is supposed to be a Harley Quinn and I don't even know what the relationship was with Yo-Yo and, and the Joker by any means whatsoever. But yeah, so that's, that was kind of an interesting thing that I remember when I found out, I was like, Oh, that's a really cool story. That's what made me want to read it is like, you know, I wonder what they went with that, but yeah, you don't actually see in the top or in the uh, main issues that the Joker is actually Martha Wayne. I don't think they ever really, you know, explained that or, or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So yeah, it's, 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 in, it's in the mini series that they kind of delve into that side and the whole Oswald Oswald Cobble, Cobblepot and all that all that you know. Yes. Yeah, and that's what's interesting with that one as well too is that the penguin is actually working for Thomas Wayne and running the casino. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So with issue two, it, I mean, it opens up with a um, story of, I think it's, it's Slade Wilson, you know, Deathstroke is working with Clayface and it looks like they're pirates, you know? Yeah. Um, and so they're out on the boat. I, I forget what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to find the Atlanteans, if I remember no. correctly. Uh, Deathstroke, Deathstroke is looking for Rose. Is it for who? His daughter, Rose. Oh Rose, okay, gotcha. I I I I misheard you there, so I apologize. Yeah, okay, yeah. So he's he's looking for his daughter, um, and then as they're looking for her, they get attacked by the Atlanteans, and pretty much Aquaman shows up and he says, you know, we're just going to kill everybody on board. Yeah. You know, shows like Aquaman is like really ruthless here. So again, it's very, very different uh, Aquaman than what we're used to. Um, and then we go back to the Flash um, talking to Batman, and you know, Batman's wondering like who who he is and how's he know like his son and stuff like that. And then um, Barry Allen starts getting these new memories of the new universe he's in. It's like he's in a lot of pain while this is happening, right? Excuse me. Um, and so he's dealing with you know losing the memories of his old universe and adding the memories in the universe that he's currently in. And then flash, you know, uh, shows him that, you know, who he is and he gets the ring out, opens up the flash suit, but it's the reverse flash costume and not his, um, red one. And so that's when he starts uh, suspecting that the reverse flash is behind all this. And then he tells Thomas Wayne that in his world, Bruce Wayne actually lives and that he becomes Batman and that Thomas Wayne and his wife were the ones that were killed. 
Now, this makes Thomas Wayne want to help uh, Barry Allen now because he wants a world where his son lives on. And so he had like didn't want anything to do with him until he found out about that. And that gave him a little bit of hope. So you find out that this is a very hopeless man. And like this is the first time in years that he's getting any kind of spark of hope that he wants to, you know, do something to really affect change and all that. So um, is there anything that I missed so far? Yeah. Well, not so far, but then they start to fricassee Barry. They start to what? Fricassee Barry. Fricassee Barry? Sorry. Fricassee. You know, like when they like keep try to turn him back into the flesh. Oh yeah, yeah. This when they <laughs> yeah, when they try to uh, set up the yes. experiment to do that and everything, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. I've yeah. never heard that term before. I I, I like Ricassee. Like I I Frick. is, is that Fricassee. Fricassee. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> gotcha. Is that like a term specific to this story or is that like a term that I just I never heard of I, before? I, I think it's, a, I want to say it's a cooking term. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I've never heard that word before until today. And I'm not surprised because I always feel like I'm, I'm learning new words I've never heard of before either. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. So basically what they do is um, Barry talks to Thomas Wayne about how he needs to get his powers by setting up this almost like Frankenstein kind of experiment where they set him up to a um, to a, to electric chair with the, you know what what you see with um, you know people who are you know since death and everything like that. It's a, pretty much that essentially, right? But they set up all the chemicals and everything that um, happened to him in the accident. I gave him his powers, and so you know they set that up. They put it on top of I think it was on top of Wayne, Wayne Manor. Manor. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they had the lightning rod up to get the lightning strike. Mm-hmm. It hits the it hits the lightning rod. Um, it hits Barry. All the chemicals hit him and all that. Um, and he just gets fried, basically, right? He's not dead yet. You don't know if he's dead or not, but he's pretty much fried. His whole skin is is charred and all that. And it seems like he might be dead at this point. And that's how the issue ends. Um, what's really interesting about this is for those who are interested, there was a series that came out last year called Flashpoint Beyond, and Basically, at this point, uh, it, the whole series is basically talking about what if Flashpoint went in a different direction because someone altered the the timeline or universe again. Um, and it was like at this point, before Barry even got struck with the lightning, like someone kills him, and then like that, the whole universe kind of went down a, a whole rabbit hole that way as well too. So if you're interested, <laughs> there's a whole series that came out last year that kind of splinters off from from this point in the history as well. So uh, anything in issue two that I may have missed or. That's that's pretty, pretty much, much of it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's at this point they're so pretty much setting up, you know, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we get to issue three, and uh, issue three starts off with uh, Batman. You know, takes him down to uh, Wayne Manor and is trying to you know heal Barry. And let's see here. I'm trying to get back through. All this stuff here. Yeah. Um, he's trying to heal Barry. And I think, you know, it, it, was this the one where he had to get hit again or? Yeah. Well, he's he's laying on the uh, table wrapped in bandages. And he, I guess he has like third degree burns all over his body. And he's right. like, we got to do it again. It wasn't <laughs> strong enough lightning. Right. Okay. We've got to do it again. <laughs> Gotcha. And yeah. So yeah, I, I couldn't was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you're insane. And, and he's saying that as somebody who's insane himself, basically. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they set it up, they do it again. And uh, this time when he gets hit with lightning, I think, you know, Thomas gets knocked off the ceiling. He's almost falling to his death. Like there's a panel that shows kind of like those great um, spears on a fence that he's like landing right towards it. And then Barry, you know, gets his powers back and, and goes out and saves him right before he hits those uh, those uh, spokes there. And so he, he gets all of his powers back, and then they go back to the uh, Wayne Manor, and um, he starts healing up really fast. So he got his healing fi- uh, factor back and all that, and, and Thomas is really impressed by that. And then he goes and makes his own suit, I guess, in a matter of seconds, right? He didn't like the yellow suit, so he went back yeah. and, and just made his own suit again. Um, and, and I don't know, like, maybe, you know, this better than I do, but like, was, did it pretty much look like the previous suit or is this a little bit different? Um, I think it's pretty much his, you know, standard suit. The same one once. Yeah. Because once he came back and Wally and him were both wearing the, uh, flash suit, Wally got the, like the very maroon that looked like, like covered his face and. 
Oh yeah. Bit, so, so they could di- differentiate them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So this, yeah, this one, it's, it's probably the classic suit. I mean, I, I gotta say, I've never really been a huge fan of the flash suit, especially with the yellow boots. Cause the yellow boots always made me think that he was wearing like rain boots. So, <laughs> I mean, that's just my take on it. Right. Um, but yeah, so, you know, he made his own suit and, um, you know, Barry is talking to Thomas and is saying that, you know, what must have happened is reverse flash must have went back in time, changed everything and eliminated or changed, you know, the Justice League. So that way Barry didn't have them anymore uh, because he said, like, you know, that was the first thing that he would have done to try to stop me from trying to change the past. And so they're trying to find uh, Superman and there's like no record of it anywhere about uh, a man, you know, named Superman or anything like that. And so um, Barry's like, you know, was there ever like a, a meteorite? or like a rocket ship or something like that that crashed into Earth. And Thomas said, yes, but, you know, I, I think he said something along the lines of, you know, it, it's kind of classified under NASA. And, and Barry's like, do you think you can get into it or anything like that? He's like, no, but I know someone who can. And that's when they bring Cyborg. Well, when they, yeah. When, 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 they, when they're when they looking that information up, he's, they're using a computer and uh, Flash makes the comment that this is very slow. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was just like, why is this taking so long, right? Yeah, so it must be like, and this was like in 2011, so like internet speed was was getting better than like how it was in the 90s. Like if you watch Captain Marvel, like they had that scene where, uh, you know, it took him forever to like load up a AOL disc and everything like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just kind of interesting of, of how they're saying like, you know, this is really slow. And I feel like that's just, <laughs> you know, that's that's a commentary on technology, right? Is that no matter like what, you know, where we at in our own history and everything, we're always going to think that some sort of technology we're dealing with is just so slow when reality, like that was, you know, probably a hundred times faster than what we had five years ago. Right. right. Yeah. So um, anyways, but yeah, so they were talking about, you know, how Barry would not have gone back in, um, in the past because Barry knows that that's very dangerous and talks about the butterfly effect, uh, which, you know, it's a very famous you know, theory. Like, if you don't know what the butterfly effect is, like, look it up. It's actually from some sort of old classic story from the 1950s. I forget what what the name of it is, but that's where the whole idea comes from. Do you know the name of that book by chance? I no, I don't know the name of it. Yeah, book. yeah, but I, yeah, it's not a new not idea. A very like, good, yeah. Not a very good Aston Kutcher movie either. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> So anyway, so uh, Thomas and Barry, you know, teams up with Cyborg and Cyborg, you know, agrees to take them um, to find the Superman or, you know, what uh, Barry's calling Superman. Cyborg says there's no mention of this or anything like that. I forget how he figures out like where it's at. I think he kind of was able to, you know, crack into some um, securities and stuff like that to figure out like they're holding somebody in some sort of cell and all that. And I think the way that they got him to agree to help them is that Thomas said, if I remember correctly, that he would join his little team. Um, right. <laughs> so, because again, he wants to create a world where his son lives. And so that's why Thomas is doing all these things. And so when cyborg hears that, he's like, all right, I'll help you, you know, hopefully get the sky. And that's supposed to like, you know, change the tides and all that. So they go under uh, metropolis into the sewers and everything and goes through um, all of these um, high security levels that's in the sewers. And they're walking through these different laboratories. And what's funny is one of the panels um, says, it, one of the panels like shows like a laboratory of like an experiment or something like that. And there's a skeleton of a, of a dog. I'm wondering if that yeah, was supposed to be a uh, uh, crypto. crypto. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what I assume. And I, that's why I think they Person were insinuating. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I took it that their whole, the Superman's being held. They're breaking into, you know, this world's version of Cadmus. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of like the, you know, the, super secret lab right organization right yeah um yeah i just i just know when i saw that panel i was like okay i don't think i'm gonna let my you know kid read this because this is like you know traumatizing for a kid who loves animals so um but yeah so you know the next page they were able to knock out the guards they got into the huge holding cell that has the superman symbol on it so obviously you know they um, they carried over the whole, you know, they found a symbol that represents Superman and all that. And they, you know, engraved that into that huge, it, you know, it's like a, it's a very obvious thing of like, here's Superman in, in the comics for this. <laughs> so they open, so they open it up and they look inside and they see somebody in there that's clearly uh, Cal L, but 
because he's been captured and put underground for so long, he is not very strong at all. Like he just seems like he's a very skinny, you know, very uh, weak person. Say what? Emaciated. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just not the character that Barry had described at all whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> and so they're like, all right, well, let's just break him out. And, and I think Barry even said, like, if we get him out to the sun, then maybe he'll rejuvenate and, and all that. Cause he knows that, you know, that's where he gets his powers at. So, um, so they break him out, they start heading out and are fighting all the guards is chasing after them. Um, you know, Barry, you know, reassures Kal-El that, you know, everything's going to be okay. Just follow us. And kal is like, okay. Um, they get outside to the sewers he, he hits the sun and then he starts, you know, feeling better. And I think they even start, you know, trying to shoot at him. But then he uses laser eyes to sh- uh, shoot back at the uh, guards. And then I think Barry tried to ask him, you know, you know, can you, oh, no, I think it was it was Batman, if I remember correctly. He's like, you know, go ahead and finish off the rest of them. And then he just flies away. Right. Because he's really scared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Batman's like, well what are we going to do now? Like that was like their, you know, one chance of being able to turn the tides and he just flew off. So, and that's how the issue ends is all the guards are, you know, pointing their guns at Barry cyborg and Batman. And so that's how that issue ends. So, uh, issue four, any, anything else, Chad, that you want to add that I haven't hit on yet as we're going through this? That's, that's, that's pretty much, you know, the, the, you know, the main points of the story. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's some other like side stories going on. Like Lois Lane is like, you know, involved in some of these international, like, I don't think she's just a reporter. I think she's also kind of like a, almost she's, like a, no, she's an undercover spy. Yeah. She's an undercover spy, but she's like pretending to be a reporter or something like that. Right. She's yeah. She's, uh, she's a uh, pretending to be a reporter or she's a reporter, but she's looking for the resistance. Right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and see, this is where my memories kind of get like blurry a little bit because I, I read this like just a couple of days ago i reread it um for tonight's episode but like when i try to recall some of the details it always gets blurry because i know the animated movie kind of you know changes it a little bit so i'm always kind of trying to figure out which one was from the movie and which one was from um was from the comic so um but yeah i mean there's a lot of kind of like smaller stories that are just kind of like it it kind of develops to the larger issue or the larger word that's kind of like developing by kind of showing you wonder woman and showing you um you know aquaman and what they're doing through the rest of the world and so there's all these little stories of like how they're showing you these other characters are also in the universe but you know they're very different and all that um so yeah so we haven't been hitting those as much but well it also tells you kind of how how and why they show up at the the end for the big battle (laughs) right yeah that too yeah so, um, yeah, so issue four opens up with funny enough, it, it has a address from the president saying like how things are really, you know, bleak right now and how, you know, we don't know like what's going to be happening in the next 24 hours because of everything that's happening, um, on the, you know, TV screen of the president is clearly Barack Obama, um, that they drew in there. And then we see that the TV is being watched by the Shazam kids, right? And so they're all talking about, you know, should they help? Should they not help? You know, uh, you know, Billy's trying to figure out what's the best thing to do because their foster parents said like, you know, they should not go anywhere without them because it's so dangerous. But Billy's also worried about, you know, if they don't have, if they don't help help save the world, then there's no world for anybody to come back to and all that. Um, So they talk about that. Go ahead. Plus they also, plus they also had a previous run in with Wonder Woman where they kind of got, uh, you know, Got a nice slash across their face. That's right. Yeah, because and, and actually they had mentioned that in the first issue when they were talking to Batman about you know teaming up and all that because when they said Shazam, Captain Thunder said that Wonder Woman left an impression on me and, and had those scars on his face, right? And so yeah. he wanted to do that. So yeah, so I think it's um, again they didn't really explain like what happened in that previous fight or anything like that in this five issue series. Uh, but you know, obviously that's kind of made Billy worried about this whole thing and, and wondering it like, you know, if they should try to fight again or not. So, um, and then also we see that Hal Jordan is not Green Lantern. We, we kind of got that confirmed in an earlier issue, yeah. but we get a few pages where, um, he's actually getting into a jet. They're going to shoot a, um, uh, bomb at, I think. It's either the Atlanteans or the Amazonians. I can't remember. Who. Amazonians. Is it Amazonians? Okay. He, 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 his mission is to drop an atomic bomb on them, and the, and kind of when they first mention when uh, Barry is going through like the computer looking for Superman and everybody, and he mentions you know of course they kind of you know 
made me forget how, you know, how, you know, my friendship with Hal and all that. He goes, but when he finds it, he goes, Hal Jordan, still not married to Carol on this, on this earth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's just doomed, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and what's funny is the missile was called the green arrow because it was created by queen industries, you know, and, and, right. and I don't even know if they ever said that, um, Oliver was the green arrow in this universe, well, but. Well, well, it was Oliver's company, and what the Green Arrows Industries were doing was they were taking the villain weapons and using them to develop new weapons. Right. Yeah, but I, I don't think in the series they ever really confirmed or denied, like, yeah. if there was a Green Arrow. I can't remember, because I think, I'm not sure if the, uh, that time, no, the, they don't really say, because that, High end was only a one shot, and he never like donned a Green Arrow um, garb. Right, right, yeah. So yeah, I mean, so I think the fact that they never really mentioned a Green Arrow says that there there wasn't a Green Arrow in this universe. So, um, so anyway, so yeah, so Hal said that you know he has to try to do this in order to you know save the rest of the world, um, and then you know it, it switches back over to the fight between uh, Batman, Flash, and Cyborg and the guards over at the secret facility where they're holding uh, Superman. And then all of a sudden, uh, Element Woman shows up and kind of helps them yeah. fight. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is actually my first introduction to Element Woman. I don't think I've ever think, uh, seen her in anything else. This is, I think, the first introduction to uh, Element Woman. I think she plays a bigger role later on you know, during the New 52, but this is the first time. You know, she's kind of like Metamorpho. Yeah, yeah, it's um, and, and the page that they have in here in this issue made it seem like it's it's an introduction because they have her posing and they you know have her like name in a very like logo kind of text in the dialogue bubble and all that. So I got the impression that this was like the first time we actually got an introduction to who this person was as well yeah. too. We we technically I think this is their first introduction like ever you know in this world and DC continuity and whatever. Right, because we technically saw her in the first issue. She was part of that group of supers that was trying to convince Batman to join their team. Um, so they talked about her, but like, you know, it was like very briefly and, and, and that was pretty much it. Like there wasn't like any well, formal introduction or anything. I think it turns out that she's um, spying for the Amazons. No, that was a, uh, we'll get that issue five, but that was actually Enchantress. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. One of them. Right, right, yeah. Which, which, I mean, that was yeah, that was kind of a odd thing, but yeah. Enchantress was also in issue one. She was part of the Secret Seven, and um, you know, was uh, did not want to join or create a super team by any means whatsoever. And so she was really, really against it from the beginning. So, um, but yeah, we haven't seen Enchantress since the first issue here. But going back to this, so we, um, Element Woman introduces herself. You can see that she's kind of, you know. Um, socially awkward. She doesn't know how to interact with people. You know, obviously she hasn't had a whole lot of, you know, opportunities for that. And she wanted to help out Cyborg. Like she said, she was following him because she's never been part of a team before and she wanted to help out. Um, so that whole conversation happy, but then, um, happened, but then Barry starts getting those, you know, moments of like memories are being erased and new ones are being inserted and all that. And it looks like he's having almost like some sort of Caesar. So Thomas Wayne, you know, sedates him or tries to sedate him as much as possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then, uh, the next page goes to, goes back to, uh, Billy Batson and, and the rest of his family, you know, trying to figure out what they're going to do. And then all of a sudden Batman, cyborg flash element woman just like crashed through their door. They didn't, they didn't knock. They didn't open it. They just like, just, you know, crashed, like kicked it in basically. And just, you know, walked into the house, breaking, and entering again, Batman has no qualms with like breaking the law on his terms and everything. So, <laughs> cause he was the one that kicked it down, but yeah, he just shows up and says like, Hey, we need to, you know, you know, get flash um, better. And, and he said that he knows that, Shazam has, you know, connections to lightning power. So he's hoping that maybe that can help Barry in this instance. So Billy, you know, kind of tries to help him. And then they have a moment of connection where Billy sees where Flash is from and sees a completely different world. And he's wondering, like, you know, what world are you from? Because, again, he says, like, because that's a world of hope. So basically, you know, again, solidifying that this world is just very bleak and just no one is happy in this world whatsoever. Like nothing ha good happens in this world. Um I don't know if you kind of catch it there. Uh, 
sideboard goes, you guys have a tiger in your house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't know the whole backstory between, like, they kind of explained it a little bit, but um, I think, like, the wizard allowed uh, one of the kids to keep, like, this tiger because he was, like, the last tiger of, of Kandak. Yeah, it's it's Takitani. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tani is the name, yeah. And so what's funny is like it's uh, it, I guess it can only be seen by like, certain people, I guess, right? Yeah, I think no, I think it, you know, usually most people see him as a cat, a house cat. Right, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of, you know, it's <laughs> disguised as a house cat, but you see it as a reader goes, like like as a tiger, yeah. <laughs> and Cyborg goes, there's a tiger in your house. And they're like, how do you know? It's like I have a cy- cybernetic eye. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny. He said my cybernetic eye sees a tiger, but my human eye sees a cat. So I can only imagine like how confusing that must have been for him, like seeing those two things at the same time. <laughs> um, yeah. So you know, they they brought a flashback. Um, Batman. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Flash decides to take Batman into the kitchen and says that they need to do something to stop this war. And I think he said that, you know, cause if we don't do something here, you know, he's like, I don't know like how many more of these events I could take before. I won't remember anything from my previous life. Right. And so Thomas is willing to again, help him because he doesn't want him to forget Bruce and forget, um, and try to save his own world and all that. That's the whole reason why he's doing this. And so, um, he's, he's just like, you know, <laughs> flash is like trying to convince him to do this. But Batman just says, no, he just wants him to go and change it. He's like, I don't care about this war. I want to take care of getting you back to where you need to be now, basically. So the whole story ends up being that Cyborg, um, all the kids and all the other people in the other room, he like shows up in the kitchen. They talk to Flash. They talk to Batman. Um, and they all say, like, let's go and do something. All, all the Shazam kids said, let's go ahead and try to stop him. Flash is on board. Cyborg's on board. Batman is not. And Flash gives him a cold stare and said, Bruce would have come. <laughs> Which is, well, you know, guilt tripping him it, into doing this. <laughs> right. And this is this is after kind of, you know, which will play which plays out in the final issue. But, you know, when they're talking about Barry goes, I just can't go back and change things. You don't understand. You know, it'll mess yeah. everything else up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So so he guilt strips him to do that. So Batman says, okay, wait, let's go ahead and tell the others to meet us there at the, at where they're, the war is going on. And so they all take, um, you know, the bat plane over to where the fight is happening. You get like the whole team, you get other people. I think Enchantress shows up in like in the middle of it as well too. And you see that Aquaman and Wonder Woman's already fighting against each other. Um, and then the team shows up and starts, um, you know, joining in the battle. Um, and then Enchantress, this is what you were talking about before. All of a sudden, even though she was on the side of Cyborg, Batman, Flash, and all that, um, she uses her magic to stop the kids from continuing on as Sazam. Right. And then that's when you find out that she's actually working for the Amazonians and is not on their side, basically. Right. And, and, because it's so, so, something that happened in the Secret Seven uh, with uh, Shade. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, she she made some sort of comment or something like that where she said, uh, you know, I don't, it's like, basically, I don't care what happens. I just want to have fun, you know? So I, I think she just kind of picked, the, like, the more fun side well, to fight for. <laughs> she, she, you know, she's always been kind of, you know, schizophrenic anyway. That's her character. Right, right, yeah. Um. So while this is going on, you know, all the, all the kids aren't Sazam anymore. They're kids, and I don't think it was... Wonder Woman, but I think it was probably one of the Amazonians um, that ends up killing Billy by sticking a sword through him from the back, right? Um, and then that's when, you know, Flash is like, I can't believe it. He was just a kid. And then the issue ends with reverse Flash showing up and he looks at Flash and says, look what you did, which is interesting, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so that's issue four. We get to issue five and it pretty much picks up from there and it goes into the whole story of how reverse Flash um, you know, tells him like basically Barry's Barry's accusing him of saying, like, why did you go back and change all this? This is a, a worse world. And then that's when reverse flash says, It's actually I didn't do anything. It was all you. And he tells him about how he was the one that went back and used like the the time vortex machine, I guess. Uh, to go- cosmic treadmill. Yes, the cosmic treadmill. That's what it's called. Yes, thank you. <laughs> um the cosmic treadmill. What's oh my god, it's like that's such a 
that that's like a, a silly but fun and and still ingenious way of like explaining you know time travel for the flash it's from the silver age so yeah yeah but they continued that on right like they could have updated that on they're like, no they're like no let's just yeah. keep it as a treadmill <laughs> Um, but yeah, so reverse flash explains how, you know, for, I, I can't remember what, what reasons he said or anything like that, but he said that Barry, you know, decided that he wanted to go and save his mother mm-hmm. by going back in time. Mm-hmm. Right. Basically, basically he's like you one, one, one night, basically you started feeling sad for yourself and decided to go back and change, you know, your past. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so so he explains to Barry like how you know all this happened actually because he went back and changed his past, and then this kind of created a ripple effect, and because of that, that actually freed uh, the Reverse Flash from being like tied to him, and so he exists outside of the timeline, which means that he no longer has to make sure that the Flash becomes a person in in the universe he's in. He like he will all always be the Reverse Flash no matter what, right? right? Well, because Barry Barry running pulls from the feeds, uh, Speed Force. Right. The, the reverse flash is the negative speed force, mm-hmm. and the negative speed force is generated by Barry. So that's right. why Eobard is able to exist. But when he got caught outside of time and all that, then he became the paradox. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So so he explains all this, and Barry all of a sudden remembers all this stuff, and then they're all you know fighting, and of course you know. Reverse Flash being the classic villain he is, is is like egging him on and taunting him and all that. And then all of a sudden, you see a sword go right through uh, the middle of his chest, and Batman shows up with a sword, uh, which I, I think he probably got from the Amazonians, but it's just like it's a huge sword, like for somebody to be carrying around, you know? Um, so yeah, so he kills the Reverse Flash that way. And then uh, we see that. Batman um, is trying to get Flash to get back into uh, to go and correct things, and we get like you know the Grifter and the Resistance, you know, joining the fight. Um, and first appearance of Wildstorm. Yeah. Oh, oh that's right. Yes. Yeah, this, yeah. Yeah. So we get Wildstorm from here. Um, Enchantress is still fighting around, and then you know she's like stopping. Um, all the humans from being able to try to stop the war and all that. And then all of a sudden um, the comic panel has like, you know, these letters like E kind of like going across the panel, which I, I don't know what exactly was supposed to mimicking here necessarily, but you see everybody looking up and then you see a shadow on Chantress's face. And then the next panel is kal um, you know, in his you know suit that he was wearing from the, Ca- the the capsule whatever that he was in pretty much like leotard. does that little like <laughs> yeah he was in a leotard you know it was like a really weird leotard it was like a diff- it's it's funny because he has like a weird s on his leotard even though they had the superman symbol like you know drilled into the outside of that capsule like they had a different s on them for whatever reason um but pretty much what happened was he like smashes enchantress into the ground and like she just went flat basically like you don't see blood in the panel, but it's pretty much this anyway that she got smashed into a, a solid flat into the ground. And so like, again, ruthless kill, right? <laughs> um, so they continue the battle. Flash realizes that he needs to go ahead and start, um, you know, running back. And, and I think Batman, I forget what happened to Batman, but he got um, fatally wounded. Right. And so yeah. bef- before the flash runs, um, before the flash uh, runs back into history, he gives him a letter and says, please give this to my son. Let's make sure he gets this. And he wrote, pretty much he wrote a letter to Bruce. And so um, so Barry takes the letter, and then he starts running back in time to try to fix things. Um, and it gets to really interesting. To stop himself from changing things. Right, yeah. It's like, I think he's like, well, what what's interesting is that he goes and visit his mom first, right? Yeah. Before he goes back and like has this nice little moment and says, you know, this is what happened. I got to go back and stop. But that means you're going to, you know, get killed and all that. And she says, but that, you know, that's the right thing to do and that that's a better world and everything. Um, and so that's when he goes back and stops himself from, you know, stopping his mother getting killed. And then in this whole process, he goes through like this weird, like there's like a huge splash page where, he goes through the um, through the Speed Force, and there's three different timelines. And this is where the timeline is getting reset for DC Comics, and we're getting the New Fifty Two here. Um, and it's interesting. I don't know the whole history of it. And I I don't know so, like where this so, goes yeah. on. And then you see you, for you. This is the first appearance of Pandora. She's the is that the that per, the person there? Okay, yeah. gotcha. Because yeah. I was curious. I was like, I have no idea who this person is. Yeah, yeah. 
she plays a, a factor like in when the new 52 starts she like pops up in all of the new number ones and she's like an observing and she knows that something is wrong and uh-huh so she kind of like the watcher in, the, in this case <laughs> no, no not, not really the watcher but um i mean she, it gets resolved in doomsday clock i gotcha okay all right <laughs> yeah so yeah so you know barry knows like there's three different you know timelines and is like wondering why that is and, and Pandora's explaining this and then he's like utterly confused by this right but then he goes back to you know what it looks like in the first issue where he's asleep at his desk someone's waking him up so like it's the whole page is almost panel by panel the same thing except you see that his work is is significantly different in this page than it was in the first issue so then you know he, fi- he figures out that he's back in his um in his universe that he started off in first thing he does he goes visits bruce and kind of tells him what happens and then he gives him the letter from his father and you know bruce reads it and he's like really moved it's a really touching scene that i think it's like one of the few times we ever see batman like get some sort of um you know resolution to that right yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah so um but yeah so that's how flashpoint ends that's the last issue of the last series was there anything else that I may have well, missed in the, that. In, 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 at the end, you there's the hints that it's a it's not the uh, the old universe because uh, his flash uniform has the chin guard. Um, it looks it looks the more the lady. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but but he didn't really notice that, right? Like we notice no, as but, readers. I, yeah. Yeah. We, the reader knows, but he doesn't make a comment about it. You right. Know, he. He, he he thinks that he's set everything back to the way it was. Right, yeah. Yeah, and it, it just like you said, like his chest plate is different. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, notable differences there. So, um, yeah, so that's that's Flashpoint. So, you know, overall, like, wh- what did you think? That, I know we talked about, we're going to talk about the writing and artwork and all that. I, um, I'm a talker, and this took, like, you know, almost an hour to explain, <laughs> so we can kind of condense this a little bit but like you know what what was some what are some of the things you want to talk about here i don't know i I think you know the five issue mini series is good Mm -hmm. but in order to get the full effect you you know you really should read all the different tie-ins because you learn that adam soar never died and he's the green lantern uh because you know that's why how jordan isn't um uh, and it also brings back Frankenstein and the uh, creature commandos. Uh, mm. I think this is um, Frankenstein's first appearance, appearance since um, Seven Soldiers. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, I mean, and when you uh, see the members of the resistance, mm-hmm. you see the most of uh, the team that eventually becomes um, the Demon Knights. Um, so right, yeah. you're, you're seeing a lot of, you know, hints that things, uh, from the flashpoint universe kind of were folded into the new 52 universe. And, you know, it was a good story and I like how they kind of, you know, continued the effects of it throughout, you know, the new 52 into, you know, the rebirth and, uh, you know, made it, you know, tried to explain that it wasn't, you know, just a story to do a story. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and with the tie-ins, I will say this is that I think, um, you're right because the animated movie that's based off of this, they actually took a lot of the stories from the tie-ins and incorporated into this as well too. I don't know. Did you ever watch the animated movie of it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and and so like, there's a lot of scenes um, from that movie that didn't make it. That wasn't part of like the five issues, but I, I know it's probably part of the tie-ins because it's the, all those additional stories. Like you kind of see more of, of how the war between Aquaman and Wonder Woman actually started um, because they were supposed to get married, and then something, <laughs> some, somebody. The Amazonians, I guess, somebody murdered somebody. Then they went to war, and then a Wonder Woman murdered Mara, and yeah. that's why she wears the helm. Right, she decapitated her and, and like sent her body yeah. back to Aquaman. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty gruesome. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, the whole the whole the whole series, you know, even the tie-ins are pretty gruesome. I mean, you have 
uh, an evil plastic man climbing inside a uh, uh, animal man and then just kind of like exploding out and oh you my have, gosh <laughs> you have, you have uh, Grodd ripping uh, Tom Gorilla's head off oh. <laughs> They're, they're loving these decapitation scenes, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, so. um, not for the faint, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm a huge Batman fan. And I got to say, I really, really enjoy this take of Batman of Thomas Wayne being um, the, taken on the mantle. Right. Like, mm-hmm. first of all, I thought the suit was really cool. I liked the red circle behind the bat symbol and like they added touches of red. Um, to his bell and to his eyes and stuff like that. I wasn't a fan. I don't know what what, what it was or what they call it, but he has like those weird like hooks on his shoulders. The the uh, Azriel uh, as bad. yeah uh, yeah <laughs> yeah. I, I just I wasn't a fan of that because I feel like it was so impractical. But the, uh, you know they even you took the the Thomas the Thomas Wayne being Batman and kind of folded that into Earth Earth Two of the New Fifty Two right for a while. You know, he was the he was Batman before he was killed and Dick Grayson took over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I really like their their take on it. I like the the character drawings and stuff like that. And it was just kinda of interesting to see that. And and I it made me want to read more of that story of Batman. That's why I, I got Flashpoint Beyond because I really mm-hmm. love that take of it. And like I said, you know, it's we get Thomas Wayne as Batman and Martha Wayne as Joker. And it just kind of adds a very different dynamic. That's very, um, that's very recognizable to what we see with Batman Joker in the main universe, but also just have that additional like layer of complexity with the fact that they, you know, used to be married to each other and they had a son together. And like, you get moments where Martha starts, you know, trying to, come back a little bit because Thomas starts telling her about how, um, you know, he met the flash from a different universe and that's a universe where Bruce lives. And then she starts like coming back a little bit and then she goes back to being the Joker and all that. So, so it's a really interesting story. And I, and I wish, you know, I wish this hadn't been just like an event. I I would have liked to seen them kind of play in this world a little bit more because it was nice to see the different, you know, takes on the, you know, different characters that kind of were, again, you know, obviously they thought they were getting stale, but these were like new, like totally different offshoots that, you know, they could have, I would have loved to have seen them play around with for a year or so. Right. Right. Yeah. I know. So yeah, it's, um, you know, just I think it had you know just a couple issues of a miniseries and all that, and then like you know we had, didn't get anything else until last year. Um, but yeah, so well, and then they folded. Uh, Tom King brought the Tom Thomas Wayne into his Batman run. Oh, did he really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, yeah, because um, around the time because uh, Flash and Batman kind of crossed over when they were, you know, kind of trying to re explain how everything got, you know, changed for 52 and how it was Dr. Manhattan and <laughs> how, you know, the button. And right. So, yeah. And then um, some, I can't remember exactly how, but Thomas Wayne came back and teamed with Bane and they took down Batman and, Oh, Cause, interesting. Cause, cause I'm going to have to look this up now. Yeah, <laughs> Tom, Thomas didn't want it, didn't like the fact that his son was Batman. Yeah, he, he wanted him to stay away from that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cla- so. Classic story. <laughs> <laughs> just like yeah, just like my favorite character, Daredevil, and his dad. So, <laughs> uh, well, overall, like, how would you rate this series, this this story? You know, out of out of ten, like, where does this kind of fit for you in terms of the writing and the artwork and all that? I think it's it's a solid eight. I mean, again, this is a, a point where it's like um, event fatigue was kind of setting in mm-hmm. um, with crisis or infinite crisis um, 52 and then one year later and then uh, final crisis, blackest night, return of Batman. And then it's like, okay, 
we're going to be doing another, you know, this is, this is the summer event. Right. <laughs> and, it, you know, I think they, they pulled it off pretty well. And, you know, I don't know if transitioning it into, you know, the new 52 was, I mean, it was a time, it was a good way for them to do that transition mm-hmm. rather than just having everybody wake up and go, Oh, we're different. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, okay, um, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it, I think it serves an important um, purpose story-wise in mm-hmm. the overall history of the DC, the DCU. Right. Yeah, and and that reminded me of how, um, you know, when when Barry just kind of wakes up into that world. I think that's why it worked really well when you read that comic that you can just kind of you dive right in and you don't have to know like all these like backstories of like what happened in that universe because the same thing happened to Barry basically. Right. Like he just woke up in that world, had no idea what was going on. And so you were kind of like living through Barry and that, like you don't know what's going on because he doesn't know what's going on. And, and so you're kind of experiencing it with him and, and learning all these stories and everything. And so I think that was written really well in that perspective. Um, I think overall I would give the same thing. I would give it eight out of 10, um, I think the artwork was was fantastic. I don't think I had any issues or concerns with the artwork at all whatsoever. Um, I think the, the can, writing. Can you really can you really have issues with Adam Kubert? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, not. I mean, you know, I'm sure somebody does for whatever reason, right? But not me. Um, the the writing the writing was really good. The only the only you know, there's a couple of things that I kind of took exception to is that in the first issue we kind of get these narration um, notes that was happening at the top of the issue and you didn't know who's writing that you knew it wasn't Barry because he was talking about Barry and then by the end you find out that it was Thomas who was narrating that but then it just yeah, never really followed through like through the rest of the story at all like it just never happened yeah again. well I guess it's kind of I, I, I think if I, if I remember right it's kind of like his letter it's you're like reading yes. his letter. Yeah. And so it kind of opens with, you know, reading the letter as part of the exposition of setting up everything. And then, you, you know, you really don't get to read what the letter says. Um, right. You kind of have the idea because it's Barry's story, but it's also kind of Thomas's story. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that was a nice sense. I liked that. It just, I know for, for me, it was just odd that, that's how they set it up in the first issue. And now, you know, by the time you get the fifth issue, it kind of comes, you know, full circle and that you realize that's that, you know, that's what that was, but it just, it was still kind of odd for me that we just didn't get that yeah. later on. Um, and then the other thing was just like, it's, it was just like weird things like Enchantress, you know, switching sides just kind of seemed, uh, not out of nowhere, but just like, wasn't really well, necessary, I, I guess. I don't know. Well, it just, I, I, I think they, you know, again, assume that people were kind of reading, um, you know, the other tie-ins and not just the main story. But- right. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, overall, like, like, just like you say, I, I give it eight out of 10 too. So I'm, I'm on that same page there. So, okay. Well, um, before we wrap up this episode with the comics we're reading segment, uh, just want to remind people that again, the caption life is part of comic watch. So if you are someone that is interested in being a reviewer for comics, or if you uh, would love to review, you know, TV shows or movies or even, you know, anime, I think we even do like games from time to time. Uh, definitely check us out and give us, um, you know, your application and, and tell us why you want to, um, uh, right for Comic Watch. I'll have a link to the application in the show notes below. We're always looking for writers. Um, once you fill that out, it takes about like seven days for us to get back to you and all that. Um, but yeah, and if you never, you know, wrote, if you've never written before, like this would be a great starting point. It's definitely, as a reminder, it's it's a all volunteer. Everybody that's part of this website that writes for this website, we all do it for um, as a volunteer. We don't get paid for it, but it's a great way to kind of you know hone in on your writing skills. If you want to you know, start writing and you've never done that before. Like this is a great place to do it because then you get those opportunities and those practices and you get feedbacks from the uh, editors on, you know, how to improve and things uh, like that. So yeah, I yeah. promise to give nice notes. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> honestly like, I, yeah, I get notes all the time and they've always been like good and constructive and everything like that. Never been, you know, never like in a negative way or anything like that. So you if stop, you're interested, writing. <laughs> say what you suck. Stop writing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, so if you so if you're interested, you know, check out the link bef- below. And then next week on next week's episode, we are going to be reviewing Secret Wars from Marvel Comics, and we're going to be joined by Matt and Lauren from Hops Geek News Podcast. So definitely tune in for that for next week. So let's talk about the comics we're reading uh, from Comic Watch. Our editor in chief Matt Meyer said that he is diving heavily into my childhood this week. Maximum Carnage, followed by the dreaded Clone Saga. I have not read any of those have you read those chad no <laughs> okay so we have nothing to to talk to matt about so <laughs> who does <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um anthony bergamini said that tyler davis got him onto g willow wilson's poison ivy which is just so amazing and i agree i've only read one issue that i had a review for comic watch but i loved it so much that I went ahead and ordered the uh, trade paperback so I can get caught up on all the other issues. I didn't want to try to find the other issues and try to get caught up, um, you know, by, you know, going to different shops and hoping that they have those issues. So I got the trade paperback. But I just remember that one issue I reviewed, which I think was like number seven, if I remember correctly. I loved it so much that I wanted to go ahead and get the rest of the story. And as many of us know, it was supposed to be a limited series, but it got changed into an ongoing series. Have you read that one? I've I've read a couple of them, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've also, you know, I having read, you know, as I edit reviews, then I kind of, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, <I> have a... <laughs> you, you kind of get an idea for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then our Illumina- I, I, I I live vicariously through uh, you guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I I get that. Well, and, and I feel bad for editors sometimes because you know if there's like a comic series you want to read like you kind of get that spoiled sometimes because you're reading through our reviews and all that so i think that's the reason why i would never be an editor because i don't want them to be spoiled for me <laughs> um in our lumina casters discord channel a uh, year of the collector which i'm sorry by the way if you are interested in joining our discord channel we have some great people in there that also love comics and a lot of geeky stuff as well so i'll put a link to that discord in the show notes below um, but in our discord for lumina casters year the collector said he's reading wonder woman number 800 he said i mean first appearance of liberty the daughter of wonder woman yes please i know a lot of people are really excited about that so um so i know that's going to be talked about a lot um and then Byron O'Neill from Comic Book Yeti said, I finished the Chroma trade and I'm starting Infernal Go Red trade this evening. And he said, I read mostly trades. Um, Infernal Go Red is fantastic. I absolutely love that. I have all three books. I have not read Chroma though. Do you, have you read Chroma or know what Chroma is? No. Gotcha. I'll have to ask him about that because I, I don't think I've ever heard <laughs> that before. So yeah. And that's fine. I mean, we're all reading stuff that other people probably haven't read before so or heard of. <laughs> Um, Ellie from the All Day with Ellie show says he's currently reading Secret Invasion, obviously because of the Secret Invasion show that's coming out. Um, and first episode just dropped uh, earlier this week. Kim from the ODPH podcast said he's reading Rogue Son number 13 by Ryan Parrott, Abel, and Marco Renna. Massiverse Next Phase begins now, which is the Cataclysmic War, if I remember correctly. Um, and then Joe Loves Comics said that he is reading more of The Walking Dead Compendium, uh, Volume 2. He's almost finished with it, and he's really enjoying it, and he's on the final volume collecting uh, collected within it. And Rachel from the Five-ish Fangirls podcast said, not a comic, but just started the Doctor Who book, Scratch Man, written by the fourth Doctor himself, Tom Baker. And last but not least, Teal Productions said that he's catching up on Hell Witch, Lady Death, and La Muerta from Coffin Comics. I have not heard any of those either, actually. Have you, Chad? Yeah. I've, well, I've, I've, I know that that's Brian... Bellows or whatever his name is. Uh-huh. That's his imprint. So. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I've never he, heard of those. So those I, are interesting. I, I think he. I think he kickstarts a lot of his books now. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And again, if if you all those who are listening, if you want to, you know, find out what some good kickstarters out there, like check out the Comic Watch website because we have a whole Kickstarter page, you know, that we put out. Um, you do chat actually up on the, you know, yeah, like chat puts it out, you know, so um, you know, it, Zook, Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> however people are kind of like self-funding because i think it's i think it used to be called kickstarter corner but then it got changed to crowdfunding yeah kickstarter, yeah right, yeah, yeah yeah but we we started out with kickstarter corner and then um because we you know didn't want to limit it and you know i was you know got was talking to the guy from zoop and it's like okay we can't just call this kickstarter <laughs> right yeah so that makes uh, sense. It became it became crowdfunder to so yeah. be more 
more inclusive. Yeah. No, I, I and I love that. And I think that's really good because, because there's a lot of different ways to really, you know, self fund your comics nowadays. So yeah. But yeah, if anyone's interested in knowing like, you know, what's out there that is, you know, uh, more of an indie self published, um, or, you know, trying to start their own comic series or anything like that, go ahead and check out comic watch. We have a whole, you know, um, a, a we weekly the service. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, but it, it's a weekly column that uh, Chad puts out that lets you know what are some you know ones that you want to check out for this week. So, all right, Chad, what are comics you are reading right now? Uh, well, I'm kind of on a big Star Wars kick right now. Uh, mm -hmm. We recently introduced my uh, six and a half year old son to Star Wars, and so we've watched some of the movies. And mm -hmm. um, I, I sleep very light at night because his takeaway uh, from the original trilogy and watching uh the force awakens was uh sons kill their fathers so oh uh, yeah yeah I, I i sleep lightly <laughs> but uh I've, I... I've gone through and been reading the uh marvel uh you know i read the like marvel star wars from the kind of took place but after a new hope between before empire and then they shifted over so i'm currently like finishing up uh all the series that were involved in the war of the uh, war of the bounty hunters. Gotcha, gotcha. When you were talking about um, you know the whole Kylo Ren you know stabbing Han Solo scene, uh, what's funny is my kid when he watched that um, at home, he wanted to redo that scene with me like over and over and over again. It made me worried. I'm like, should I like be fearful of my life when I get older? Like, why is this kid? Because not only was he like redoing that scene and stabbing me, you know, with his. Uh, Kylo Ren lightsaber, but he would cackle like it's hilarious. And so well, I'm like, am I seeing like the fruits of, of yeah. an evil Sith Lord like right before my eyes, you know? Well, the the uh, picture I sent you that you used for the um, pictures. Yeah. The, uh, a, uh, the, the uh, dark side lightsaber my son made me in kindergarten. Oh, really? Oh, I yeah. love that. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um... Well, good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, what I'm currently pulling this week is um, Batman Brave and the Bold number two and Daredevil and Echo number two, which it's funny. Like I have the worst memory when it comes to recalling what I read in comics probably because I, <laughs> one, I read so much and two, like, you know, when I'm reading, I always have like so many things going on in my mind, but like these two issues, I remember I enjoyed number one. I just couldn't tell you what happened in them. Like, I, I just have that bad of a memory. Like, I'm like, I know I liked it. I don't know what happened. So when I'm reading number two, I'm going to be like, maybe I need to read number one again because I have no idea, you know, where this left off. Um, getting Darkwing Duck number six was uh, absolutely been loving from uh, Dynamite Comics. Hell to Pay number six from Image Comics. That's been a great story. I think this is the last issue in the series, if I remember correctly. Um, the Riddler Year One issue number five comes out this week, and I'm absolutely looking forward to that. I know in the Comic Watch Slack channel, uh, people have been talking about how they've read it, and like they're like, I guess their minds have been blown. Like they haven't been saying anything about it because they don't want to spoil it for people, but they're just like, I think uh, Matt said, "Oh my god," and then Anthony said, "Yeah, I know." Like, what was that? Is what he said, and I <laughs> want to be like, "What? Well, what? <laughs> like, like I, we." We usually talk about you know comics and journal stuff like that, but I feel like very rarely do we mention something like that of a comic that's upcoming that people have read. So it's really interesting to hear people talk about that. Of uh, you know having that kind of reaction to this upcoming issue. It's it's a fantastic series. I absolutely love it. Um, but it's just interesting how this issue you know got some people talking in Comic Watch. Um, I'm also picking up Tales from Nottingham number five from Mad Cave Studios, and then two series from IDW Publishing, TMNT, Saturday Morning Adventures Continue number two, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Ronin in the Lost Years number four. So I'm looking forward to all those. Um, I know I've been behind on the issues I pulled like a couple weeks ago, so I'm probably going to have a huge stack this week that I'm going to try to get caught through uh caught up with and everything so um but yeah so thank you everybody for sharing what comics you're reading this week chad thank you for joining the show to talk about oh, flashpoint <laughs> before i let you go where can people find you and your work online uh you can find me at comic watch obviously um you usually look for anything in with the uh news related <laughs> right yeah um <laughs> Or, or previews, uh, mainly number one issues. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and then <clears throat> I have a uh, 
a uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel. I uh, kind of, I usually, you know, try to do once a month, but being on the comic watch <laughs> and scheduling yeah. for comic watch, it kind of, <laughs> they're kind of bleeding into each other. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel you. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, uh, I, I feel like I'm like keeping my head above water trying to do this and the stuff with comic watch and all that. And, and, but I mean, you know, just like you said, sometimes it's nice to try to figure out ways to kind of do, you know, to both, uh, with, with like minimal effort. <laughs> so yeah, if you could yeah. cross over, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, you can find me on my, my channel or on the comic watchers show. <laughs> and I'll make sure to put links to that, um, in the show notes below as well too. So thanks again, Chad. Uh, thanks for talking flashpoint and hopefully we'll have you on the show again, uh, later. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I think this is only the second time we've talked. I think the first time we talked yeah. was uh, a couple of weeks ago when you uh, joined me for um, the Comic Watchers. Yes. Yeah. And that, I mean, because we've always, you know, chatted through Slack and everything like that, but we never actually you know, like, <laughs> talked, you know, through a video like this before. So, yeah. So hopefully we'll have a lot more of those to come. <laughs> yeah. So oh, definitely. So, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity and always fun to talk comics. Same here. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. And that wraps up another episode of The Caps in Life. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You can follow us on social media at Caps in Life. For more information about us and all of our previous episodes, visit thecapsinlife.com. <laughs>